and I'm going to rock it. So I'm kind of getting him to activate his glutes for me. Oop. And look, look how well that activated it. We activated something. in Gentle Giant Draft Horse Rescue in Mount Airy, Maryland. So Gentle Giants was formed in 2005 and our mission is to rescue draft horses from slaughter. They're a relatively uncommon breed, but we're seeing them grossly overrepresented in the horses that are exported for slaughter. And keep in mind, this is slaughter for human consumption. This isn't slaughter for dog food or byproducts or to feed animals at zoos. This is for people overseas to eat. Right now, we have about 141 horses here at the rescue with us. We rescue hundreds of horses every single year, and we've placed over 1,000 horses in adoptive homes. So we have Marley here today. We're at Gentle Giants Draft Horse Rescue. Marley has been here about a year at this uh, Gentle Giants farm. Uh, they got Marley at auction. Our Marley is a teenager. We don't know exactly the, the age. Um, Halflinger is the breed. And uh, we uh, fortunately, they were able to save Marley from auction and uh, from the meat men, if you know what I mean. And um, try not to think about that. You're in a good place now, babe. So he's a great guy, really handsome, uh, has a history of some hoof problems when they got him. So uh, laminitis and um, some issues with the feet. And But uh, he's coming around great. He's been here a year. He's got stronger. He's healthy. He looks beautiful. His coat came in really nice. A lot of times when they get these horses, they're emaciated and malnutrition and everything that goes with that affects the coat, the hoofs, they're more prone to infections. So once a place like General Giants with their amazing staff of uh, full-time people and volunteers and doctors and vets and everybody that helps these horses out, they're able to really re rehabilitate these horses very quickly and they give the horses love and, and health and medical attention. It's just amazing seeing the, the differences. Um, I do want to start looking at you now. Is that okay? Can I work with you today? I'm going to check up here at the Atlas and my right hand fits in nicely. My right hand's like this with two fingers between the wing of the Atlas and the angle of the jaw and I do this in all my videos. I like to check uh, either humans. I have a human channel called House of Cairo but I also have an animal channel. I'm always checking the upper cervicals. Um, it's really important to check the upper cervicals in all, you know, living species with, with uh, spines, horses, dogs, uh, cats, chickens. Uh, we did a goose yesterday uh, because that's really the top of the nervous system. So we have the brain, the spinal cord, and the brain extends through the spinal cord. So they're not separate organs. Your brain is not a separate organ from your spinal cord. If you could dissect it perfectly, it would be great. And you would have a brain with this long tail. Uh, and the tail is the spinal cord. So. You're, he's thinking, why don't you just stop talking for a minute? All right, let me work on you. I know. Come here a second. So, it's the left side that's tighter. The right side fits in nice. The left side, I can't get the both fingers to flatten out. So I have like one and a half finger width, and I want to get them both to relax. So I'm going to come back and get that in a minute. And the reason I'm going to wait a little bit is that one is more startling when I adjust that one. And I want him to get used to me a little first. So now I'm going to grab his nose a little bit here and just start checking down, looking for a muscle knot. And here it is. Now watch his eyes too. Can you see his eyes? He'll tell me where it is by showing me the stress. I'm watching his ear and his eyes at the same time. And as I come down, as I come down through here, that's, that's a stress point there. So when I rub that spot here, 
his eyes blank. And right there is the tough spot. So I'm gonna hold on to his, um, bring his head towards me a little bit, laterally flexing to the left, holding that spot, and giving him a chance to let this go and release it. I'm also, uh, Bonnie's the one helping me today. She's amazing and she's been helping with a lot of the horses here, which has been great. Thank you, Bonnie. And um, now I'm gonna bring his little head over towards me. I'm holding this, giving him a chance, watching his eyes, let his eyes soften. Watch his nostrils, see if he breathes. I'm just gonna hold this until it releases. I'm gonna try it again. That's a tender spot. So imagine if I'm working on your neck and I hit that spot. Here I am on his neck, right there. And that is a spasm. So I do it a little bit, it releases. Then I dig a little deeper. I go a, deep, a deeper layer and he pulls away. But we're still okay, right? Come back to me now. Let's do a little more, a little more. Here's the spot, remember? I'm just gonna hold it for a minute. Watch my own toe. And I'm gonna hold it a little longer. He just took a breath. He's giving me a lot of, a lot of room to work and now I'm gonna let him feel that. And before, we're not gonna let him eat any grass. We're just gonna look at him for a second, see if he is taking that in. Now he's not licking and chewing yet. A big truck is going by, but here's some, here's some lipping. So watch this, here's what I wanted to see, which is the lipping and the licking and chewing, which is a parasympathetic nervous system response of de-stressing. Now that here, you can swing around so we could see what we're dealing with, right? 20 meters away is a big, loud truck. So come back over this way with the camera and we're gonna work a little bit more. Okay, I still wanna get this atlas, so I think I might get it now. And my hand's gonna come in here and just push that atlas down a little bit. I don't have to do much because I wait till Marley leans into me and that body weight helps me move the bone. That's it, I got it already. He's pretty relaxed, so that was a gentle, and I felt it just go and move. Let me feel the spacing, so see if I got it enough. Yeah, so both my fingers fit in now. And I wasn't able to flatten two fingers in the spot before. Can you see that by coming in closer? Come here a second, babe. So it's right up here. And I could only get one and a half fingers before, but now the two flatten out. And that's what I wanted. I wanted that on both sides. So that's nice, you did good there. Let me just check your jaw a little bit. Let me check your TMJ. Let me check your pole coming down here. Here are the big pieces, the vertebras right here, coming into the shoulder here. Now, if we square him up, you, you will see. Now we're on a little bit of a hill, so that's a little challenging. Come this way, babe. You might have to help me, Bonnie, bring him. We're trying to square him up for a second, but you'll see he's a little narrow in the base. He's a little base narrow in the front, and his feet are very close together. Do you see this? I also look at the distance between here and the hairline. And I want to pick this leg up. Let's square him up a little so he can stand square. And that should do it. Can I have this leg? May I take your leg? May I have this? Let me have this. All right, let's try one more time. We're on a hill, so we might have to not be able to get this leg today. There we go, that could be good as soon as he stops. Bring him forward a little bit. And may I have this leg? There we go. I just wanna scrape away just a little bit. So I have a little bit of a pick here. Now we have, 
Can you see this with the camera? All right. The frog. I mean, this, 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 when this separates here, like a little bit of a sulcus or opening, there's still some infection down there. And this is softened in the frog, in the rear part of the frog. So this, this uh, horse has still little issues. <laughs> there, it just cracked. Did you hear that? Feeling all in here. I'm gonna put that foot down now. Good. Yeah, I just wanna take a peek. I'm not gonna be picking up the feet on this hill. It's just too much. But let's come down and check everything else. I'm coming around the back. Now, the left tip is a little low, and if we're on the hill and that's the high side of the hill, this should, if anything, be higher. But the left hip is sunk down here. So that's not good. Um, I wanna bring that hip up a little bit. Let me see if I can just get some reflex points to work with us. I'm gonna take the tail and pull laterally on the tail because I want him to resist back the other way. And I'm gonna rock it. So I'm kind of getting him to activate his glutes for me. Look, and look, look how well that activated it. We activated something. All right, let's move him away from, from that. Here, we can, we can meet you up here, Bonnie. Let's just go the same direction one more time. It's already coming back up now. So now I'm gonna adjust a little bit more. Waiting for the weight distribution. Watching his back there, the weight's coming up. There, got it. Let him walk around one more time and then when he stops, we'll look at the hips again. There, square him up a little bit more. There you go. And then, <laughs> all of a sudden he's got a lot of energy. He's feeling a little better. So Bonnie uh, says he's feeling a little better. Yeah, so now I have the hips level. So I like that. So what before this hip was sinking down and I lifted the ilium up, I'm gonna come back, grab a clean spot of the tail because we just saw we had a big release there. Not the type that I usually get with musculoskeletal issues, but we got a, a bowel movement release. And you know what? I take any release I get. I take credit for that bowel movement. I'm just joking. So now let's feel the glutes and the hamstring. And coming around this way. He's got a lot of energy right now from when we started. Here's the hamstring. What do you think of that? This feels good. Let's do a little belly scratch. Coming into these reflexes here. Here's a muscle knot right there. I'm gonna hold that just for a second. My thumb's on it. Just working the body, working the body, working the body. All right, we're gonna wind down in a second. Bonnie's probably thinking, yes, let's wind down in a second. Let me check the right cervicals. I don't wanna to quit too early either. These cervicals are great on the right. The base narrow I wanna work on a little bit because I can open that base a little bit. I'm gonna come behind the elbow on the left. I'm looking for a reflex point underneath, like in, inside here. And we're gonna just get on that spot. Here, I found it now. You won't be able to see this, but my hand's in there like this. And I'm gonna pry this open. There we go. 
and you see he keeps stepping and this will allow him to get a little bit of a wider stance then I'm going to come around the front on the pectoralis and open up that reflex point there we go one more and there you go now come to the front find the trigger point here and there it is it was really easy to find look he's already opening up the stance do you see that Bonnie yeah wow. big difference okay so he was almost touching his hoofs and now I'm on this crazy trigger point right in here and a trigger point is a, a very highly contracted muscle that won't let go so I'm here leaning my weight in and he's leaning back into me look how wide his base is right now because I'm giving him a release to be able to do that but he, he's choosing a wider stance to support this big weight of his and a quadrupedal stance. So this is the space I'm talking about. Before, he was almost touching his heels together. So I think we're going to end there because we, go, we got some stuff done today. I'm going to hold your little facial points to let you relax. Take a breath in. I'm just going to end there. Thank you, everyone so see if I got it enough yeah so both my fingers fit in now and I wasn't able to flatten two fingers in the spot before can you see that by coming in closer come here a second babe so it's right up here and I could only get one 